This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. All right, everybody, and welcome to the debut edition of the Outcasts with Buzz and my man Juice here. Juice. Juice. On Most Valuable Podcasts. Uh, very excited to be bringing you some content covering Chicago sports. We'll touch some other stuff too, but mostly Chicago sports, I think, is what we're going to be touching. Um, you know, you can give us a follow on Twitter at MVP Buzzweed or at MVP Juice Man. That would be really, 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 really great. And I would like to make sure you guys know to subscribe to YouTube at Most Valuable Podcasts and let us know what you think. Give us a comment down in the comment section below. You know, so we can converse with y'all, that kind of stuff. You can go to patreon.com to show some support for the show and donate where you can earn yourself some great prizes, you know, different stuff to donate, you know, donate towards all that cool stuff. And then if you want, go to mostvaluablepodcast.com so you can buy a t-shirt, MVP t-shirt, if you like our stuff and you want to rep us out so other people hear about us also. So that'd be really, really great. But uh, just diving right into everything real quick, just tell you a little bit about ourselves here. I am uh, the Buzzweed. My name is Brad. Find me at MVP Buzzweed. I'm a uh, huge diehard Bulls fan, diehard White Sox fan, diehard Chicago Bears fan, Bears season ticket holder, along with my man here, Juice. The Juice Man. So, uh, you know, just big Chicago sports fan all in general, big sports fan all in general. You know, this is our second rodeo with this kind of stuff. I'll, I'll spare you all the details. It's like we never details. left. Yeah, it's like we never left. I'll spare you all the details of the first time. We're like man cow. We bounce around a lot. So. Very talented, though. It's not, it's not because we're not talented. I'm not very talented. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, bounce around a lot. Big uh, Chicago sports fan, as you guys can see here behind us. We're uh, set up. That's why we got the name, The Outcast. We're here in my basement. So if you hear a little feedback, that might be the furnace because well, it's cold. Th- there's a story behind how they found us. Remember we were we were podcasting behind a Burger King? Yeah, that's how they found us. We were, we were selling some counterfeit mics. You know, Ricky came in. He was, he was trying to get some chicken nuggets. And Mark was like, I, I could really jones it for a, a Whopper with cheese. And we were, uh, were spitting some sports knowledge at him. Some Chicago sports. Yeah, they dug it, man. They dug and it. They dug it. They found us and they said, hey, you guys want to do a podcast? And we said, well, we only have a basement. Yeah, we, we don't have no cool studio or nothing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, so that's that's about you know that's about it for me. How about you, man? Well, I'm the Juice Man. Uh, you can follow me at MVP Juice Man. Uh, my name's Kyle. I'm uh, South Side Chicago, born and raised. Um, big Cubs opposed to you being a White Sox fan. That's cool. But cool. other than that, we uh, we agree on pretty much everything else. Um, I'm an avid golfer, so uh, you might find me on a golf course maybe one of these days, pounding some beers and, you know, making Sundays great again. Um, as Sundays were made great again recently. Tiger Woods. Which we'll touch on in a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's uh, this is my second rodeo with Brad. We did it on a bigger venue um, with a bigger cast of cast and crew last time um still gonna have those guys on maybe we're gonna maybe try to work them in uh still very good friends with uh, our buddy aaron and tony uh, a little shout out for those guys um and mikey who your cousin we used to used to do this stuff with uh we had a good time we were it was a great time doing you we were kind of stuck in between uh college some of us were in college work. some of us were finally yeah. breaking into the real world so we're we're excited to uh be a couple of years older, still can drink just about as much as we can, as you can probably see if you're watching on YouTube. Shameless Today we're plug. drinking uh, Revolution. Some, some Revolution Dry Hopped Galaxy Hero that I got at the local Benny's. So uh, yeah, we're uh, we're gonna drink some beer tonight. We're gonna talk about some sports and very excited, uh, very excited. We're gonna touch big on day, uh, big day, yeah, today. very big day. We're gonna touch on NBA first. Um, we're we'll probably hit a little bit of everything, but the biggest focus of this whole recording is going to be the Bears. You know, like I told you guys in the beginning of the show, diehard Bears fan. We're both season ticket holders, so this is huge for us. Big and, go, day. and going into this, as as the whole podcast evolves, and you know how how many episodes this is going to be, um, we're going to try to throw as much content as you guys can. Um, me and Brad are fairly open schedules, um, so we're going to try to make this. Huge. Um, yeah, we, but we need your help. We yeah. need you guys to interact with us on Twitter, interact with us on YouTube. Be great if you guys would, you know, we've been talking about maybe doing a live podcast one of these times, coming out and meeting us. Yeah, that would be um, that. That'd be our, one of our that's, ultimate goals. That's a goal. That'd you know, be a we, big goal we have for us great. We have big goals for this podcast, and uh, it we get there with you guys. That's that's how we get there. 
So we're going to interact with every fan who sends us a tweet, every fan who, you know, wants to know something, wants something worked into the show. We're going to take it in. Yeah, we're not going to be like a lot of those other people on other podcasts where you send and shoot them a question to ask a question. They think they're too big to respond to you. You know, no. Anytime you guys send us a tweet, anytime you guys send us a question, better believe at one point in the day, we'll be getting back to you. No doubt about it. You know, you won't go, not go from hearing from us or, you know, do our best to respond to every, you know, every tweet, every question, every YouTube comment, whatever, you know. And, uh, as, and as the show goes on, this is this is podcast and chill time from here on out. You know, you can learn us as we keep going. Hashtag podcast and chill us right at our Twitter handles. Um, comment okay. on, underneath on YouTube, podcast and chill. Um, we'll get back to you guys. We're working on maybe getting shirts made for hashtag podcast and chill. That'd be cool, man. Um, if we can get over a certain amount of followers on Twitter, maybe we will do a raffle or something. Oh, we'll absolutely. Something out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. If we can get up to both of us, get up to at least – We'll say four hundred. Yeah, four hundred. Because we're, we're we're a little we're low. We're, we're low, low right now. I have a lot of Facebook. Maybe friends. we could just do every two hundred followers. We okay. we do a raffle. Okay, yeah. So every two hundred followers, what we raffle off a podcast and chill T shirt. Who knows? Maybe if we get to ten thousand, we raffle off some Bears tickets. That's huge. That's huge. Okay, man. Yeah, if we both hit ten thousand followers, but we both got to do it. We well. It, well That's twenty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. Group up your friends. All you guys sitting in the basement listening to this. Follow us at uh, MVP Juice Man, MVP Buzzweed. All right, man. We're so going to jump into some, yeah. We're going to jump into some stuff here. I would like to talk about first the Chicago Bulls. You know, getting into our Bulls here. Um, tank is on. The tank is on, but the tank is not working because we're winning. Yeah, not um, right now. Currently, not, we're not right now, which is good. But we if still you're watching on YouTube, you can see that we're all staring off into an abyss. Sometimes it's because Brad's got the giant 60 inch TV across from us with the Bulls game on. Yeah, exactly. And we're we're gonna watch that no matter if we're doing this or not. 191 you know? for our uh, iTunes listeners. If you're in your car, it's oh, 191. Yeah. Six minutes left. In the you'll floor. probably hear this a couple days <laughs> after the game, but it's cool. But uh, our our Bulls are in the tank mode here, and what I'm not enjoying about it is you know the NBA came after the Bulls. Stating that, you know, we can get fined or whatever for tanking, you know, like they, they basically came after the Bulls for tanking, which I find to be completely and utterly ridiculous when you have teams like Phoenix out here sitting Devin Booker for no reason. You have teams like Atlanta, Dennis Schroeder with his fake injury. It's absolutely ridiculous and it needs to stop. Yeah, Marcus All as well. Marcus All, yeah, that's that's, the, that's a it's a joke. That's the biggest one. That that guy is fully healthy and fine, and he sits every fourth quarter. It's a, it's a it's a joke. Memphis is completely dedicated to the tank. Though. Oh, absolutely. You got to give them, and you don't hear anything of, about it. You got to give them tons of um, credit for you, for what their co- what their whole front office is doing too, because they they've taken it to a new level. You've heard about two teams tanking this year. And getting and getting uh, reprimanded by the league, and obviously the one team that got reprimanded by the league well deserved because Mark Cuban shouldn't be saying you know oh I embrace it you know like listen man like you don't want to tell your fans that I understand why the NBA would be like eh. you don't say that but for the Noted. Bulls getting blamed or accused of tanking yeah were they probably yeah absolutely but at the end of the day too you have a bunch of young talent on that bench so why am I going to play starters like Justin Holiday or Robin Lopez and hey listen I love Rolo I'm a big Rolo guy Justin Holiday go away but Rolo big fan. We're going to be looking at our younger talent. We're not in a position to make the playoffs. He's going to bring veteran leadership into the locker room, help teach him guys stuff. He's played more than half the season. What is the, what is the problem? What is the problem by playing younger talent and saying that you're here to evaluate your talent? So basically what the NBA is saying that, oh, well, by you sitting Rolo and pr- playing Cristiano Flacio, you're trying to tank. So basically the NBA is hating on players that are in the NBA. Like Flacio. Like, right. it, it's a damn joke. You know, I – Crazy. And to kind of add on it, too, I think that the Bulls, if you really were going to link all nine of them together, the Bulls probably have the best talent out of the nine. Um, I think that's kind of why the league went at them and kind of said, if you look around, like they have three solid young stars. And obviously, as a Bulls fan, we need more. We need a lot more help. Um, I don't think that this core is going to be good enough to get them close to a playoff berth or even – you know, if they were to jump at it and really try to make the playoffs, I don't think that this core, without a top, you know, seven eight player, is is going to get them, you know, to make any noise in in the Eastern Conference. But I think that the league and we we kind of touched on we kind of talked about this uh, off off air. Um, the league is in a spot right now where there's just so much bad basketball around that they're trying to spread the wealth. And I think they need to just understand that Chicago is a huge market that needs to have a good team because the NBA is better when the Bulls are better. 
and they have a they they sold out how many years in a row now? They're, they're, they they led yeah, it's like nine years in a row, and this team is terrible. But that's the it's, thing, though, is yeah, is the team bad? Yeah, but as as far as us, and you know, like obviously, our, one of our hobbies is sports. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we watch it, we talk about it, we play the games. You know, we enjoy spending time with our friends watching it. But at the end of the day, if you and I got a ticket, a chance to go right now for forty bucks a ticket to go watch Zach Levine, go watch Chris Dunn, go watch Lowry, go, you know, we're going right because we're interested. Do we think we're going to win this year? No. no. But we want to go see the young talent they're building towards to win. That is something that I want to see. I'd much rather see these guys out there losing games but busting their asses than going to see a bunch of veterans who are here collecting a paycheck. And that's the other thing, too. I think that the league doesn't understand, or maybe they do and they just they have this all rigged up maybe, you know, NBA conspiracy theories, you know, that this is going to be a Bulls top pick anyway and they're just whatever with it. Um, but I think that the way – that this is all kind of working out too. I don't understand why they would want to have a prime talent in Memphis. Why would you? It's those guys are not going to draw no matter who is there. Right. Why? Because it's it's not a storied franchise. And I, I mean, you put Michael Porter Jr. in a Bulls uniform. Oh, and that's that's like <laughs> oh. the league. The league will be rolling oh, in, in the cash. I'm because right now. I'm getting a little excited. Because think about just just think about all the money that's going to come from revenue from the team. All the extra games that are going to going to play into the playoffs with, you know, all the the endorsement money, all the you know the shoe deal. The it'll be huge, and the NBA will be rolling in it, and the ratings will never be higher. But if you put Michael Porter Jr. In a Memphis Grizzlies jersey, what what does that do? And I and I it's the it's the Patrick Ewing hole back to the Knicks in the eighties. You can't not put him in a in a market like that. The, right. I mean, the Knicks are the mecca of basketball. A lot of people say New York is the mecca of basketball. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they they specifically Harlem, you know? they yeah. specifically put him in a Knicks jersey. Right. I mean, you know, the frozen envelope theory that exactly, but like. I just don't get why the league and Adam Silver is trying to spread the wealth. I mean, and that's me from a Bulls fan being selfish. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's being selfish. I think it's like – I think it's smart business. I think – honestly, I think Adam Silver needs to do something. I think he needs to do something because if, if LeBron doesn't leave Cleveland this year and Brooklyn get or I'm sorry, and Cleveland gets Brooklyn's pick, that spells doom if they get a top pick. Mm-hmm. If LeBron decides to stay, because they can add a game changer from one to six right now. Do you, do you think that LeBron James is waiting on what that pick's going to be, or do you think that he's leaving? No, I think he's staying. I think you he's think staying. he's going to stay? Yeah, man. I can't say. I don't see the guy leaving, man. I just don't. He's on the last bit of his career. I mean, unless he goes and he plays with his friends. I mean, but we're the only well, place. Some of them are are not even. I mean, who would Mello's out of a, be? Mello's, Mello's out of a contract. Dwayne right. Wade can do whatever he wants. Yeah, but I don't think he he, tra- he just traded Dwayne Wade. I know. I don't think he, he wants to play with Dwayne. I don't anymore. think he does either. But I'm just saying, it maybe they would go and do something like that. But that's why I don't think it's very likely. I think LeBron does stay because his kids are are doing good in school. They're playing ball, Midwest ball. You know, like they're doing all right. I don't think he leaves, especially if they make it far, because LeBron knows even if he goes anywhere, he ain't beating Golden State. No. And not with his friends either. He, he, even if he went to Philly, he ain't beating Golden State. If he goes to the Rockets, he might beat Golden State. Yeah, I could see that. But is he? LeBron ain't going to be. He's going to be the third option with the ball in his hands. He's the greatest basketball player you and I, you and I can really comprehend seeing ever. Maybe that kind of plays. I remember Mike. Maybe Mike that, was a man. Maybe that kind of plays into where he's at in his career, though. Maybe that kind of plays into, hey, I think. See, a lot of what, what Le, what's happened with LeBron, I think he's kind of accepted – his role in basketball as of now. He knows he's going to be thought of as a top 10 all time, maybe even top five, which I, I mean, at this point, he's a top fiver to me as much as I don't like the guy. But as, as those feelings subsided, I don't hate LeBron like I used to. Um, back in our old podcast days, we used to go hard in Le- on LeBron. Why? Because we had Derrick Rose. Right. And they were, there was a Miami Chicago rivalry for a really long time. Um, but going into it, I thought that, LeBron, the point where he's at in his career, I thought that he might want to take a little back seat and kind of be carried. Not not as much carried because obviously he has a bunch of good basketball left in him. But maybe he wants to go and play with like a Harden and a CP3 and be that guy who's who, who can take off every third night, kind of walk to a championship almost. Because if they play Golden State, that's that's a this is a seven game series. 
and during the season, he could take as many days off as he wants. If you look at where they're at now in the standings, and I haven't looked in a couple days because I've been busy work, you know, but they're having to fight to move up in the East because they had such a bad start. Right. Um, so he really can't take days off going into the end of the season here. But I think if he played like in a, in a Houston market, they could trade off taking days off if he dragged Wade with him and Mello was willing to take a, you know, a mid-level exception or a lower end deal just to maybe play with those guys. Um, Honestly, that's, that's the fear for me though. Cause I think that's the end of, a lot of the NBA if that team is put together. Honestly, like at the end of the day, I, I really hope that LeBron – and listen, I'm not asking him to be loyal to any team because these teams aren't loyal to their players. No. And, and we're going to be touching too. on that later with NFL too. We'll be touching on that. But honestly, I'd like to see LeBron stay in Cleveland and let's make this an old NBA again. Each team has a couple good role players and a star. Yeah, but I don't think that these guys are built like that due to the – amount of AAU they all play together. Yeah, they you always want I mean? to be that's, together. That's no, the problem with today's. Right. I right. feel like it's always, oh, I played with Chris in, in eighth grade all the way till when we went to college. And then we went to college together and we played one season at Duke. You know, it's like these guys don't want to beat each other because – they're best friends with each other. Right, I you know, get it's, it. It's they, there's no well, there's no sense of competition there either. So I, no, and that's terrible for the NBA. Right, like we could dive into a whole podcast one of these days about oh, AAU absolutely. basketball and how you know the the level of like NBA and the and Nike and all these different sponsors coming in right. and funding all of these AAU programs. It's it's been great for exposure, but it's also killed right. the product on the on the court as well. And going back to what you were touching before about major markets, I never want to throw that out there because San Antonio is in a major market. They don't really I mean the last notable free agent they landed was Lamarcus Aldridge a couple right. years ago. You know, I, I I hate I like I get what a major market is and what a major in a mid market is and a small market is. I understand all that, I respect all that, but putting all that aside, the fact of the matter is to me is that Adam Silver coming at the Bulls is ridiculous. This team is playing young talent knowing they're going to lose, but it's not worse than what your Atlanta Hawks are doing, your Memphis Grizzlies are doing, your Dallas Mavericks are doing. It's not worse than what these guys are doing. And it's ridiculous that we had to hear about it because we're in a major market. That's the only damn reason mm-hmm. we heard about it is because we're in a major market. Well, listen, dude, you're still selling out games here. You're, you know, the NBA team, Chicago Bulls, still selling out games here at the UC every damn night. They're looking to get a franchise guy. I don't believe we have that franchise guy. I love Lowry to death. I love Dunn. Levine, I like him. I like him a lot. But I'm not sure what he's going to be. I really do feel that within the top four or five picks of this draft, there's going to be a game changer. A game changer. And I, really, I think there's a couple. I, really, in a franchise standpoint, I think there's a couple guys that you I can really look at. I think Aiden could be at. a game changer. Right. I think Porter could be I a game Porter changer. I think Porter could be a game changer. And, and I, I won't sleep on um, – I know that we've we've been critical of Bagley in the past – uh, talking off air, obviously. Um, I won't sleep that he won't develop into being that 1A player. And he's not going to be the guy, but I do think he could be a guy that could fit with the core yeah. and play really well. Um, I like I like the way he can step away a little bit. He's he's very athletic, but like we said, he's all these all these guys that are coming out of college are super raw. It's um it's a crapshoot for these guys. Really, well, these these yeah. I feel so bad for these GMs that have top picks because. Really, it's it's going to be a franchise job changing pick for the Suns, for the Mavericks, for if our Bulls sneak up there, um, and you're, they're going to be expected to make the right pick between. Realistically, there's about five guys at that top. That I mean, I wouldn't snub on a lot of people. You know, I mean, there's a lot of good talent at a lot of different positions in this draft. No, oh, absolutely. I think that uh, you know, even if we do fall into say six through eight. Which I mean, we got to be careful for the Knicks. They're catching right up to our ass right now. Since yeah, Chris like a half down. game back, right? Now. I do feel that either Bridges boy, I would be happy with. What maybe a Wendell Carter? Not not opposed to that because he might be able to be that future big man, right? But again, if I have my choices, I've narrowed it down to three. I'm not going to be just very narrow minded to choose the one. If I could, had to do that, it'd be MPJ because I think he could be the, the truth. But uh, I really like DeAndre Ayton. I really like Michael Porter Jr. And this next one's going to shock the hell out of you. Moving into my top three, just watch him during the Big Ten tourney. I Jaron Jackson Jr. is yeah, going to be play. he's going to be something else if he's developed right. This dude is six ten, six eleven, 
242 pounds, can bang on the inside and get a hit a three like a guard. And can move the ball and dribble. I've been watching a it's lot of that, too. He, he's a very versatile player. And with the NCAA size. tournament coming up, be, be on the lookout for him and Miles Bridges together. There's, I'm telling you right now, that's when stars come to shine in college basketball is during this tourney. That's when stars are born, especially like high draft pick stars are born. Watch out for this kid. He's going to be something. I think he might be something special. Yeah, I, I have that same opinion on Colin Sexton. Colin, Colin Sexton's, Sexton's going to be a beast in this NCAA tournament. I think he's going to will his team to at least a Sweet 16. Ooh, I, we got Bama going to a Sweet 16. I, Colin Sexton is very good. I've yeah, watched good. him a couple times. They are. He is very talented. There's I, just so many good players in the draft. Low key, also one other player I'd like to touch on. Now this is potential based. I told you about the Bridges boys. I like Wendell Carter. I've been taking a lot of heat for this. Just, I mean, I had a conversation with on about three people on Twitter about it. Kevin Knox from Kentucky can play if, if he's developed right. He is going to be a bad, a badass. People aren't going to want to mess with him. He's going to be good. So I mean, just, it's just out there. The Bulls have a lot of options. NBA, stop messing with the Bulls. You're not going to hear this, but if you do come across it, or they might. Works Adam for Silver you, might be sitting at home right now. Yeah, he does. Seem and like podcasting and chilling. Yeah, he's probably po- – oh, yeah, podcasting and chilling. Okay, cool. I'll Think give- about it. He's, he's watching the Bulls, you know, making sure they're not tanking. Hey, rig the draft, bro. I'll give you a free podcast and chill t-shirt. I'm going to just try to get Adam Silver in this basement with a double dry hopped Galaxy era. I can make it happen. And we can give me sit here time. and talk about all the bullshit that he's put Oh yeah, give me, on our, give on me enough time in the last week and a half. Give me enough time. I can make anything happen. I've been, I've been networking my ass off just during this – Little podcast. Do you want to tell the tell the people who just started following me? Who followed you? Look at that. Look at oh, that. Bulls talk. And NBC Bulls talk. And the, the Chicago Bulls following this guy over here. I know, man. I'm networking. Look at this guy go. I'm networking. So, yeah, but again, you know, I know just touching on the Bulls and stuff like that. My, I'm excited for the future of Chris Dunn. I'm excited for the future of Lowry. And I'm really hoping Zach Levine doesn't command a lot of money this offseason because honestly – and the games that he has played, he shows a lack of defensive uh, hustle, which is why I'm assuming Tibbs traded him. And uh, <laughs> even though I think he'd fit better with this team, the Timberwolves team currently constructed than Jimmy would, honestly, is what I think. But I digress. That's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. But uh, I'm not sold on Zach yet. I like Zach a lot. I like the potential. He kills it in 2K. I can tell you that much. He's going to be an interesting contract negotiator. Yes, he is, man. Yes, he because is. Because – Realistically, if you're the Bulls, he knows that you have to pay him. You have to do something because so he, he can go can't sign let any. Him walk. He can go sign any tender with a team that because he's he's an RFA, so he can go sign anything. Right. And then we either have to match or or say toodles, man. And then we just you know we get we gained Lowry and Dunn. And I guess a lot of and I guess a lot of that depends on what pick they have as well. Right. I think that if they have a top pick, it's easier for them to say bye to him. If they have the ninth or the eighth pick, it's a lot more difficult to say. I'm going to get rid of a guy who, and here he goes again as he hits a three. 